Gus designed this very useful function called take. Take is for extracting the beginning of a list by specifying how many elements of the list we want from the list beginning. So for example, if we have a list like apple, banana, chocolate, and we want the first two elements of that list, we should be able to call take with the inputs two in the list and get a shorter list that's just the first two elements, apple and banana. And similarly, we should be able to take the first element only from a two element list and get a shorter list that only has one element in it. Of course, we can also take the first zero elements of a list and whether that list is empty or not, we should get the empty list back. When we start to design this function after writing these examples, we can think about which template to follow. One obvious template to follow will be the template for processing a list. After all, we might do something different depending on whether the list is empty or not. But another important insight comes from the fact that the first input is not just any number. It doesn't really make sense to take the first half element or the first 2.3 elements of a list. We actually want the first input to this function to be a natural number, not just any number. And if we think about the data definition of a natural number, it gives us a different template that we might also decide to follow, the template for processing a natural number. It turns out that we need to think about both of these templates because when we take a certain number of elements from the beginning of a certain given list, we need to both count the number and go into the list in lockstep. Just as in the Splur Steel game, where each of the two players might make one of two moves, so there are two times two equals four possibilities for us to consider. Here, we should also consider the four possibilities that arise from the two kinds of natural numbers, zero and positive, and the two kinds of lists, empty and cons. Let's take a look at how that might go. We have two inputs now, an n and a list. Perhaps n is zero, but even if we know that n is zero, we're not sure whether the list is empty or not. So let's have an inner count in which we more closely follow the template for processing the list. And when we come to the recursive call in process list, we are also going to put a recursive call in the function take. And we need to put the rest of the list as a second input to take, but the first input should stay the same because there's nothing else we can do. So that's it for where the first input number n is zero. What if n is positive? Then we also need to look at the two cases where the list is empty or not. If the list is empty, we'll need to put in a recursive call because according to the natural number processing template, when the number is positive, it will be useful to process one less than that given number. So here, we need to put one less than n and preserve the second list input list because there's nothing else we can do. That list is just empty. But if the list is counts, well, this is in some sense the most interesting case when the number is positive and the list is counts because both the natural number processing template and the list processing template tells us to make a recursive call. And the recursive call might be decrementing n or might be taking the rest of the elements in list. Or we could do both. So what, do, what, what does that leave us with? Well, first of all, we still have the first of the list. That's just from process list. Secondly, we have to think about what inputs to give to the recursive call. Maybe we should decrement n and keep the list the same. Maybe we should keep the number the same and take the rest of the list. 
or maybe we should both decrement n and take the rest of the list. Okay, so as you can see, when we combine two templates, one for processing the natural number and one for processing the list, we end up with a template in which we have a choice of which recursive call to make. When we make a recursive call, we have to make at least one of the inputs smaller. Do we make the number smaller by decrementing it? Or do we make the list smaller by taking its rest? Or do we do both? Now, we're ready to fill in this template. Let's do it case by case. If n is 0 and the list is empty, from this first example, we know the answer should be empty. So I'm going to fill it in here. If n is 0 and the list is a cons, that's actually our second case, where, again, n is 0 and the list is cons, not empty. And in that case, according to this example, we also want the answer to be empty. So let me fill in that. At this point, you might notice that the zero case has an inner con whose two answers are the same. They're both empty. So we actually don't need this inner con. We could just replace that with empty. Let's go on to this case. Well, this is an interesting case because, oops, we don't have any examples for it. We don't have any example where n is positive, but the list is empty. So what should happen when n is positive, like the number 2, and the list is empty? A reasonable thing to do here will be to return the empty list, because what else could you possibly return? There's no element left to take. We could also declare this an error on the part of the caller of the take function. We could say, look, if you're going to call take, you better make sure that there are enough elements to take. The natural number you give to take has to be at most the number of elements in the given list. We could say that too. If we say that, we'll put that in the purpose statement and we would just get rid of this case altogether. If we don't say that, if we want to allow this kind of call as a valid call to take, then we will want the result to be empty. And in that case, let's fill in the result to be empty. So we've taken care of the three out of four cases of this nest of outer and inner cons. Let's come to the final and most interesting case when n is positive and the list is not empty. So we actually have something to take and we want to take it. For example, maybe we want to take the first two elements of this list. Here, if you're not quite sure what to do with these three available recursive calls that the template suggests us to take, you could use the table method. The table method is, again, a great thing to try when you've written the examples, you've written the template, and it's still not clear how to write the definition. We could also think in terms of lockstep processing. When we want to take the first two elements of this three-element list, how many elements do we want to take from the rest of the list? Here's the rest of the list. We just want banana. So if we want n elements from the list, it seems that we want to take n minus 1 elements from the rest of the list and then tack on the first of the list. So if we already have this result from the previous example, if we already have the first one element of this shorter list, that's list banana, we just need to cons apple on to get our final desired result, apple banana. So that tells us that we should use this lockstep recursive call where both inputs get smaller at the same time. So I'm going to delete the other two recursive calls. They're not useless in other functions, but they're useless in this function and then fill in the template by writing cons. Let's check that our test pass. Okay, 